Apostle, I'm struggling with sickness. Go to that which is written. Open your Bible. Find out there were sick people in the Bible who were healed. What did they do? This world is not designed for spirits. It's a three-dimensional framework of existence. Three-dimensional entity. So in case a spirit has jurisdiction within this context, a man permitted that spirit to function. In fact, prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. 1 John 2, 12 to 14. Not sure, my media people, please help me with beautiful. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Next verse. He now says, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Then he says, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Final verse. Then he now says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Lamentations 3.27. I just want to inspire you. It's a brief charge and then we pray. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 27. And I want every young person who loves Jesus to shout this scripture if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, read. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. One more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 2. Remember now thy creator, he says, in the days of your youth. In fact, can you give us NLT, this scripture? Can we find NLT? Let's read 1 and 2 of NLT. If, if, if that is not there, no problem. We'll just walk with it. Oh, beautiful. Now, go ahead and read it. All the youth, one and two. Ready? One, to go. Uh-huh. Verse two. Help us, O oh God, by your word. Give us grace. Give us wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what we call lifetime, what we call lifetime is the summation of the period from the point a man is born until the point he transits in glory. Are we together now? So, a measure of the time frame allotted unto you from the time you are born until the time you transit in glory is known as your lifetime. And the Bible fragments a man's lifetime into four seasons. I want you to please listen. There are four seasons in a man's life. The first season in any man's life is called the morning season. The second season is called the afternoon season. The third season is called the evening season. And the final season is called night. Hallelujah. And these seasons are fragmented into 25-year circles. So the first 25 years of a man's life, ready or not, is called your morning season. The second 25 years of your life is called your afternoon season. The third 25 years of your life is called your evening season. And 
every other thing after that time is called night. Are we together? Now, according to God's expectation, a man's lifetime should be maximized by knowing what these seasons represent and how to maximize them. For instance, in the morning season of a man's life, God's intent is that within the first 25 years of your life, under normal circumstances, you should have found Jesus. You should have found purpose. Are we together now? Yes. You should already be on a course for a glorious destiny. It is also called the learning stage of life. That is the stage of life that you can make mistakes and life will forgive you. When the sun begins to rise, it is the morning stage. You say good morning. You do not say good night in the morning. The sun may not be shining in its strength as much as we know. And yet you are still patient because you know there is something called afternoon. It is unfair to expect the light to shine brightest in the morning. So you give it room. Are we together now? But once it gets to 12 noon, you no longer say good morning because the time would have changed. You say good afternoon and there are expectations that come with the afternoon. The sun, the sun shines brightest in the afternoon. You can dry your clothes and in minutes they are dried because of the advantage of illumination. Are we together now? Yes. It is the high point of your energy. If you waste your afternoon, chances are excellent that your entire day has been wasted. Are we together? Uh, you seldom find people sleeping in the afternoon. It's a time of high energy activity. The most productive period of any man's life. That's where serious meetings happen. Are we together now? Yeah. The afternoon. And then, as though the afternoon will never end. Three, four, five, and something begins to happen. The strength of the sun seems to diminish with respect to our perception here. Are we together now? And it looks like darkness is gradually overshadowing light. It is called evening. At that point, people return back from their places of work and they begin to consolidate on their day. And when it gets to 6, 7, 8 p.m., we still say good evening, but what we mean is good night hallelujah yes and this is a replica of the seasons of a man's life as much as we do not want to hear it the thing about time is that it never goes backward time does not have the ability to go back no restoration is God taking what you missed forward not you going backward are we together? You'll never go to 2022 again. You will never go into 2021 again in as much as we know. The realm of the spirit affords you the advantage to move forward and backward. But within the frame of time, no. Once you go forward, do you know what that means? That means the moment you take that step, you are closer today to your afternoon than you were yesterday. You are closer today to your evening than you were yesterday. You are closer for some to your night than you were yesterday. Every day and every second takes you closer. And these seasons were designed to open by default. It does not matter whether you maximize them or not. The celebration of birthdays is not the celebration of longevity of life is a celebration of the investment that is made in your days. So when you celebrate your birthday, you are not counting years. It should be a time of thoughtfulness and contemplation that as seasons change in my life, what meaning, what, what am I adding to this time? It says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Now, the next thing I want you to learn, I hope God is speaking to us is that time, listen carefully, is a means to measure destiny. Destiny is measured as a function of time.
destiny. So when I say you are 20 years old, the meaning of that is that you have spent this long out of the time left. Not just that this is what you, your age. I am telling you that if you are 20 years old, what you have left is X years minus 20. Most times we don't see it that way. We just see that I am plus one. You are right, but you are wrong. Are we together now? Oh yes, when it has to do with the subject of destiny, you can be right and wrong at the same time. Plus one may be right for you as you celebrate your birthday, but from the lens of destiny, you are wrong. No, you add that plus one and subtract it from the time you have left. So you are 25. What you are celebrating is not 25 years. What you are celebrating is X minus 25 years left. That means whatever you give your time to, you are giving a portion of your life to. Are we together now? If whether you are aware of it or not, anything you give your time to, you are making a statement to destiny that I find this so valuable, I can give a part of my life to it. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, God is speaking to someone. He says today, let's go back to KJV. Well, let me just walk with what we have here for time. Today, I have given you the choice. Okay, I call heaven, KJV says, and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you by giving you the gift of a lifetime. I set before you life. I set before you death. I set before you blessing. I set before you cursing. Therefore, I can't force you, but I can advise you. It says choose life. And that in choosing life, the implication goes beyond you. That you and your seed may live. Are we together? In Joshua chapter... 24 I believe 13 and 15 that will be the last scripture and then I will now plead that you lend me your attention as I just establish something that I believe is very cardinal to this meeting Joshua 24 13 it says I have given you a land for which you did not labor the final charge of Joshua to the people before his departure and cities which ye built not and ye dwell in them of the vineyards, olive yards, which ye planted not, do ye eat? Reading to 13. Now therefore, he says, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other sides of the flood. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Read with me verse 15. Be patient as you read. Ready? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Hallelujah. But as for me, this is not a general statement now, but as for me, as for me, Joshua Selman, and my house, I don't know about your house, I don't know about your destiny. But as for me, and then my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it, we will serve the Lord. One more time, say we. As for me and my house. Now listen. Decisions decide the kind and the quality of destiny that happens to you decisions 
not just the will of God. The will of God for every believer is already clear in Scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. They are thoughts of peace. Are we together now? Yes. And not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. So we're not in doubt as to God's intent. But as mighty as God is, he's left the, the power to choose. That means I can, as an act of my will and volition, choose to live a useless life and God will respect my decision. At the expense of your eternal destiny, God still allows you to choose him or not, even though he's your creator. Can you imagine that? That at the expense of a man's eternal destiny, God will not put you under pressure to choose him by force. You can choose as an act of your will to say, Jesus, I understand you are Lord and Savior, but I reject you consciously and he will respect your decision. Decisions decide destiny. So you can find two people, say 25-year-olds, born the same day, perhaps by the same parents, and you will later call one Jacob and call another Esau. What defined the disparity in their destinies? And you would have several people of the same age range, even mentored by the same person, perhaps Jesus. They become apostles of the Lamb with various kinds and qualities of destiny. Decisions and choices decide destiny. Now watch this. To every decision you make, there is a consequence connected to it by default. Please lend me your attention. Are we together now? You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. You can only make decisions. But with every decision, you must be willing. That means before you make any decision, you must be aware of the consequences connected to it. Let me repeat myself for your understanding that you are not given the liberty to choose consequences. So with every decision, right or wrong, good or bad, wise or unwise, there are consequences. Ladies and gentlemen, walk around the streets of South Africa and you will see many destinies today as a testament of the choices and the decisions they made. You will find others frustrated in their fifties and sixties, angry with themselves and others because of the choices that they made. Everybody was given the gift of a lifetime. Are we together? And yet you will see others vibrant, strong, powerful, very optimistic about life, still in the same South Africa. Some maximize their power to choose Others wasted it and allowed others to choose for them. Others were not even aware that they had been given such power. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, I can know your life and the quality of decisions you have made so far by looking at your life so far. Some of you enjoy the immunity of responsible parents and until you got to the age of discretion, they made certain decisions. Others are victims of the decisions of parents. Now you have to correct certain things that were wrong. Ensure that those who come out of you do not become a repetition of the carelessness that you are now suffering. Are we together? Now, time has a tripartite expression. There is past, present, future. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. In truth, there is nothing called tomorrow. Tomorrow is an idea that just plants hope in your life really ends in today. Because what you call tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> your today was yesterday's tomorrow. Am I right on that? Yeah. Everything that God wants to create an ordinance out of must have a trinity expression. Time is one of them. Past, present, future. 
Now, do you know why God fragmented time within those dimensions? Because you cannot do anything about yesterday. But the only way we correct yesterday is to take advantage of today and reprogram tomorrow with it. Are we together? Apostle, I came from a family of irresponsible parents, unfortunately. That is enshrined in yesterday. There's nothing you can do about it. Sadly, perhaps I was raped when I was a child. I sympathize with you, but that is yesterday. Regretting over yesterday is wasting today. Making blind discussions about yesterday without a resolution to press forward. Uh, you thought that time will halt because of your pain of yesterday. Time does not wait. It keeps going while you waste today reminiscing on yesterday. Now, I didn't tell you one thing that I need to tell you. Yesterday is very jealous. Yesterday has such a jealousy that it wants to reproduce itself in your today. I need to inform you that yesterday carries such an a jealousy that when it sees your today it feels jealous because you will now have to leave it behind and it, it has invented skills to find itself in your today again so you find out that this year becomes like last year next year becomes like this year the jealousy of yesterday insisting to want to reproduce the pain insisting to want to reproduce the problem Many wonder why their today and their yesterday has no difference. You cannot see the demarcation. The jealousy of yesterday will require the wisdom of the world to draw a line and say, Yesterday, I wave you goodbye. You have no place in my today. Listen, follow carefully. You invited me to speak to youth. The Bible says, Remember ye not the former things. Is that in your Bible? Another word for former things is remember ye not yesterday. It does not mean forget it. It means ensure it has no power to influence your today. Then it says, neither consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing, it says, and it shall spring forth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but there are many of us here seated today. I want to dramatize. Am I wasting your time? All right. Let me have three fine gentlemen. Gentlemen, come and stand here, please. Thank you. Let's give them a big God bless you. Sir. This man, I like his beard. He's, he's going to be very... You stand right there. Pastor, please come. You stand right here. You, please stand here. All of you face this way. Everybody, watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand here. Now, in my example, all of these are the same person, only in different time frames. Watch this now. I want... The small you to discuss with the elderly you. I want to hear what the discussion will be. Am I? Now, the 15 year old you wants to have a conversation with the 70 year old you. It is still you. So, good evening, sir. And he replies, How are you, my son? Same person. How are you feeling now? My life is full of regret and pain tears and sorrow and then the young you asks why and he says well you are young you have time time with a lot of ignorance and zeal I am old I have wisdom from my pain but no time to correct it again a conversation between the young you and the elderly you. And then the young you says, Sir, what happened? 
and he says, I once was you. And while I was you, I wasted my time not knowing that I would never be this version of me again. Now I have found myself in this state. My lifetime, morning wasted. Afternoon wasted. Evening wasted. And so, this is the young you. This is the elderly you. Crying in pain. And then the young you says, so what can we do about your situation now? And he says, unfortunately, my days are almost here. But here's what I want you to do for me. There are many who are joining this queue too. Go back and tell them that if you ever have the opportunity, do not forget that one day this you must become this you. And that this you can never become this you. So one can become another, but the other cannot become this again. And he says, tell them, are we together now? To maximize their moments. And I am where I am today, not because time passed, but because of the decisions and the choices I made as time passed. Another conversation, scene two. Are we still intelligent people? So another person now is discussing. Good evening, sir. And here is a vibrant elderly version of himself. How are you? Says, fine. You seem like an old man. Yes, I am an old man. Are you happy? Very happy. Why? Because when I was you, someone preached to me. When I was you, I listened to someone. When I was you, my colleague said, don't mind them. And I said, no, I will mind them. And now, I am healthy, strong, happy with children, grandchildren, Jesus, wealth, great destiny. What advice do you have for me? And the old you says, tell the ones who are like you to follow me. Now listen to me. In this place right now, whether you like it or not, there is a movie your life is acting. At the end of your days, this conversation must happen between these two sets of people. The young you is evolving. Remember you celebrated your birthday last week. Let me tell you the meaning of that statement. X minus your age. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. Now be ready to write. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. This is. Please sit down. I want every you to get something to write now. Please write. And if you don't feel like writing, refer to my story again. Did you hear what I said? If you don't feel like writing, refer to my story you will not forget this story I assure you there is a reason why I acted it because I acted you and unfortunately you are not given the liberty to choose whether you want to act it or not you are currently in that story hmm. I have found out in my life from scripture from the privilege of studying great people that there are a number of quality decisions. Now, our lives will be full of decisions that we have to make every day. But hear me, there are certain cardinal decisions that every
everybody here must make these decisions directly affects the quality of your destiny and I beseech you by the message of God for many of you this decision will be the cure to the pain you have seen as a result of the kinds of families you have come from everything that has caused you pain and hurt here is a therapy from scripture for it Apostle, I was born by a father I do not know, perhaps. A mother I do not know. I sympathize with you, my dear one. But here is a decision I want to propose to you. That if you do not make that decision, remember the jealousy of yesterday. It will reproduce itself. You have cried once. Don't cry again. Let me give you a few foundational decisions as my session with you here. And then once we're done, I'll get back to my seat. Are you ready to write? Promise me that you are going to take time to meditate upon this and you will walk upon those decisions. And I assure you, we'll see ourselves a few years to come and you will give me a serious hug with the kind of energy you used to run here and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Decision number one. The first decision that any man and every man must make is the decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Please write it down. The first decision that every young person must make here is the decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Second Chronicles 25.5 26 5 2nd Chronicles 26 5 let's hurry up I like you to read it please and he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord help me God made him to prosper as long as he sought the Lord, regardless the economy, as long as he sought the Lord, regardless the limitations around his life, provided he chose to serve the Lord, it pays to serve Jesus. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, do not allow our world today blackmail you emotionally into making you feel like a fool for loving Jesus. When you go through the pain that will be programmed in your future, if you don't take God seriously, those encouraging you today will not be there to take responsibility and say, I take responsibility for misleading you for 20 years. So don't mind them when they make you feel like Jesus is a burden to your growth. Hmm. The decision to love the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life as for me and my house it's a choice apostle do you have options absolutely there are 4,000 plus registered religions in the world and you are at liberty to choose any one of them but as for me it's no longer because of my father or my mother it's no longer because of the society I found myself in. I sat down, I thought, and my conclusion is that Jesus is worth my life. Is God speaking to someone here? You may be the first, even the only person to have made Jesus Lord of your life. But can I tell you, with Jesus, you are more than a majority. You must summon the courage to remain strong. Now, I admit that some of you have had to pay a dear price for standing alone for Jesus. I understand. Some of you have lost friends. Some of you have lost your sense of self-worth in fact. Because we live in a world that bullies you when you are a spiritual person. When you love the Lord with all your heart, especially as a young person, they look at you as a waste of energy and time and they hope that you will find meaning one day. Oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen, the maker of men, the lifter of men. Are we together? The decision to know the Lord 
and to serve him all the days of your life. Do you have that down? Let me show you one more scripture very quickly. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. Very quickly. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. My goodness, God is helping someone here. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Next verse. That whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. That's how they were determined. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. Read verse 15. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them. As a result, the Lord gave them rest round about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord gave them rest round about because they covenanted to seek him. Number two, decision number two, foundational decision if you want a glorious destiny. Are you ready now? The decision to be transformed. Second to that decision to seek and serve the Lord is the decision to contend for transformation. To alter the way you think, to alter the way you speak. Isaiah 8 and verse 20, you are transformed when your thinking changes and when your speaking is altered to become pro-kingdom, pro-scripture. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read this scripture. Isaiah 8, 20. Ready? One to read. To the law and to the testimony. It says, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means there is a way those who do not have light speak. When you are a carrier of light, it alters your mind and it alters your speech. Calling yourself a failure, for instance, is proof that there is no light in you. You must contend for superior transformation. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, he didn't say so he will become. He says so is he. You will be a merciless reflection of the summation of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Question, what do you believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about success? What do you believe about destiny? What do you believe about those around you? What do you believe about enemies? What do you believe about friends? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about prosperity? What do you believe about the word of God? This is a summation of your belief. And life will set an exam for you that you must write. You don't write it with your hand. You write it with your mind. There are many people who are saved, but they are not transformed. The inability to contend for superior beliefs. Now listen, transformation does not just mean that you become more Western. Sorry to use that expression. No, transformation means you become more pro-scripture. You can adopt another ideology that is different from yours, but still the same thing in terms of their impotency to make you great. Are we together now? So when we talk about transformation, it means that you submit yourself to principles of scripture as the modus operandi that guides your life. If the Bible says, for instance, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, write in your hostel, in your room, 
from your lowly estate no comeliness to be desired but you begin to speak every day in the name of Jesus I have a glorious future a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side while you are doing that allow the mockers to laugh they are not mockers they are witnesses tomorrow when you become great they will say we saw him we saw him while he prayed every night we saw her while she cried every night while you return from school and you are studying they may be laughing now but I assure you they are admiring you in secret lay your hands on your head and say father say it again father I contend for transformation can I tell you this listen there are two ways psychologically speaking that men are programmed one is genetically the other is environmentally genetic programming is why you look like your parents environmental programming is a summation of all the beliefs that you would have acquired from your environment and for some of you you came from environments where based on what you have received there needs to be a a divine surgery in your mind it is out of the abundance of that mindset that hatred thrives, jealousy thrives, pain thrives. You are intelligent, but something about your growing up has made you believe you are a dummy. So even when you have the answer, fear still remains. There needs to be a transformation. Are we together? Change your clothes. But if your mind still remains the same, you only dress the old man. Watch this now. So, you have a gentleman. Come, please let me use you. Yes, you come. Come, I know you're doing your work. Watch this. Let's assume this gentleman just gets admission to study, say, architecture in a university here in South Africa. So, he's entering the campus as a naive young man intending to be an architect. You will never call him an architect just because he's holding an admission letter. That is not enough. He's admitted, but not yet qualified. You would think the presence of the admission letter should earn him the right to be called an architect. Not so. This gentleman from every lecture, and as he transits from the various stages, his body does not change. His voice does not change. His height does not change. His looks does not change. Perhaps his dressing may not change. Six years later, you say, architect, so, 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 and so. My question is, what changed? So what did you educate since his, his, his body did not change? Who is the architect, the man or the mind? The body only carried the mind to the lecture hall and re engineered that mindset for six years and you call the mindset and confuse it with the body as an architect another example let's assume two people are standing here and god forbid but call this gentleman a responsible young man taking care of his family and then another another person a very irresponsible arm robber killing people watch this now you call this one an arm robber and you call this one a pastor am i right on that you hate the arm robber remember and you love the pastor my question is let life be taken out of both of them and we have two dead bodies lying down do you call the dead body a pastor do you call the other dead body an arm robber so who was the arm robber really and who was the pastor really because the same arm robber can come to house of treasures and sit somewhere and the moment the word of God comes his body does not change his voice does not change and he switches dimensions and after three years the one's arm robber now becomes a pastor the question is who was the arm robber and who was the pastor isn't it amazing that we change every other thing except what really needs to be changed we change our hair voice bodies 
clothes. Help me. Accept the real thing that needs to be changed. One more time, lay your hands on your precious head. Father, in the name of Jesus, every negative belief in my mind destroyed my destiny. It must leave me now. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. Every negative thinking, suicidal thoughts, thoughts of failure, thoughts of defeat, thoughts of limitation, I make up my mind today I will not embrace the negative trait that I saw in my father I love him but I will not reproduce his limitation I love her but I will not reproduce her limitation hallelujah please be seated So that you walk out of this conference and say daddy I love you mommy I love you my siblings I love you but I found a superior template for my life I found a belief system that in hate I will not win with jealousy I will not win I have chosen I'm using the power that God has given me I came from a poor family let a poor family not come out of me I came from a weak family let a weak family not come out of me I came from an occultic family, you may say. Let an occultic family not come out of me. Sit down, please. Decision number three. Samaskela sofraski bahas sebrandege balakusiata. Are you ready? The decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. Write it. The third cardinal decision that every man must make. The decision to discover and fulfill your God-ordained assignment. Hmm. Colin. I just feel stirred in my heart to sing that your song for me. You know, you thought you would escape that song. You're still going to sing that song. I'm a Zulu. Give us a teaser and then the balance will come when I'm done with the remaining keys. Go ahead. Bye. I want us to blow off the roof in this place with that song. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. John 4, 34. Please be seated. Decision number three. Is God changing someone here? John chapter 4 and verse 34. Jesus said unto them, who is speaking? Jesus. My meat, he says, the word meat there means my satisfaction and fulfillment is derived from doing the will of him that sent me 
and to finish his work. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Everyone here seated has a purpose and a destiny in Christ. God is not scratching his head wondering what your life should be about. No. You came as the conclusion of his script that has been written. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Lo, I come, he says, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will. Everybody say, lo, I come. Shout it again. Say, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will. My greatly revered mentor who went to be with the Lord many years ago, Dr. Miles Monroe, here's what he had to say. Changed my life by granting me a revelation of purpose. And he said, the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo DRC, not the oil mines in Kuwait and the Middle East. Hallelujah. He said, the wealthiest place on earth is the cemetery where dreams never found expression. Books that should be written that were never written. Songs that would have healed nations were never, never, never sung. He called the cemetery the wealthiest place. And he made up his mind that he was going to die empty and not add to the wealth of the cemetery. And thankfully, he's written books today even though long gone. They are the kinds of people the Bible says, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. These men cheated death by immortalizing their impact. Hallelujah. At the end of your life, I learned early in life, you will be remembered for the problems you solved or the ones you created. Did you hear what I said? At the end of your life, you will be remembered for the problems you solved or the ones you created. You are either a solution or the problem. You can't be neutral. It's your choice whether you have come as a solution or you have come to add to more problems. Every armed robber was born. Every pastor was born. Every world changer was born. Every troublemaker causing mayhem in society was born. The difference is that others did not know that they were born to a great destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You are in this place today because someone discovered purpose. You are seated here today as a testament of the profit that comes with discovering purpose. You have listened to men of God after men of God because someone found his place. Will you rob us of an opportunity to live a greater life by refusing to manifest what God has put within you? Lay your hands on your stomach. Say, Father, that which you have put within me, I must reveal for my world to see. Say it again. Say, Father, that which you have put within me, I must reveal for my world to see. Imagine that the architect that designed this structure chose to not find his place. Imagine that the worshippers that have brought great songs in South Africa chose that they will not leave purpose. Imagine those who have built the great malls that you have to shop and to do the things. Imagine the farmers that are responsible for your food. That they made up their minds that they would not leave purpose. Can I tell you? Everybody is interconnected through purpose. That means when you refuse to leave out purpose, you cause someone's, someone else's destiny to suffer. Because their destiny demands your manifesting purpose for their own too to find expression. Hallelujah. As much, watch this now, as much as it is, uh, as an, an anointed a man as I am, I will not fly myself back to Nigeria. I will have to depend on someone's discovering his place for my safe arrival. Can you imagine that? You would think my being anointed should automatically make me be able to just fly in the air. Unfortunately, God did not design that system. As anointed as I am, I'm going to join the queue patiently and enter the plane and depend on the creativity and the discovery of purpose of someone for my safe arrival. Question is how many people have been connected to your destiny? Would they be disappointed by your refusal to manifest? Imagine the world without Zuckerbergs. Imagine the world without Elon Musk's. 
Imagine the world without Joshua Selmans. Imagine the world without Apostle Felix. Call your name. I won't call your name for you. Imagine the world. Imagine the world without South Africa. Can I tell you this? I made up my mind very early in life that as a covenant, I owe my generation a debt that I will spend my lifetime paying. Hallelujah. Now, when you find your place in life, can I tell you this? Purpose gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things. It is difficult to say no to many things until you are occupied by and with purpose. People can invite you. Can we go for an outing? And you say, thank you. I, I really appreciate you. But there's something, there's a project I'm working on now. There are books I need to read because the nations are calling upon me. The reason why most of us are not able to say no to peer pressure is that there is nothing that legitimizes your saying no. You were idle anyway. Hallelujah. Discovery of purpose. Let me recommend two books for you. Please write. If there is any material, first and foremost, by your man of God on purpose, I recommend that you get it and listen to it. But let me recommend two books. Number one, Discovering Your Purpose. Write it down by Dr. Miles Monroe. Number two, Rediscovering the Kingdom. Still by Dr. Miles Monroe. Don't assume some of you have it, but you've not read it. I didn't say buy it and keep it. Buy it and let your mind, your eyes, everything be involved in reading it. Hallelujah. Our generation is an interesting generation. Do you know? When God was helping some of us, you can listen to a 30 minutes message for three days because you have to stop after two minutes and meditate. A message of 30 minutes finishes after three days. Because when you start, you stop and you are like, my goodness, what is this? What kind of scripture is this? But now many people finish a 30 minutes message in 10 minutes. What do you think would have happened? Purpose. That means by the next time we meet, everyone should be well stationed on the path to destiny. So if God is calling you to be a preacher, Waiting for ordination is a joke. It means you are not serious. If God is calling you to be a preacher, you are going to be a prophet to the nations and by now you are not praying, you are already too late. By now you are not fasting, you are not building your spirit. God is calling you to pastor nations. What do you want to teach them? One month of Bible study for your lifetime? Think again. You believe that people are so stupid and they would sit down as your members to watch you joke around with their mind? Do you know that the church is a compendium of intelligent people? It takes beyond spirituality. You have to be vast, intelligent. You must understand leadership, administration, character. There are many people who tell you, I'm having visions of ministry. God told me I would take over South Africa. Show me what you are doing now. I submit to you. Thank God for the privilege of finding Jesus early. Some of us gave our destiny on bending focus from beginning. The distraction in this generation is going to abort many destinies. You must sustain the courage. Manage your social media exposure. Manage television. I'm not saying avoid them. Have dominion over them. You should be able to shut your social media uh, space and say for the next two hours, I will revisit it later on. Everything God gave man, he gave man control over. By the time things control you, it's a sign that you cannot control destiny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. There are some of us now, at this point in your life, you should be fasting and praying. You are too young to die by fasting at this age. Fast! Fast away flesh out of your life.
Listen, you have to make prayer investments. What investments? You are programming your 20 years. Every night, you find somewhere one corner. Shakata bakata. Kapokas kapratia. Embrekete bakatoska. Shaleke bereketa. Embra kaposke debetasia. Yes, sir. Let one day become one month. One month become one year. By the time you are graduating, you are collecting two certificates. One by your university, the other from the school of the spirit. Haven't invested your time. If you collect only one certificate, you wasted your time. Say myself. Wake up. Say it again. Myself. Wake up. Arise and shine. Say myself. Wake up. Arise and shine. One more time. Say myself. Wake up. Arise and shine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The days, hear me. The days of joking and playing games with your destiny. Remember my story. The young man is looking at the old man and the old man is warning the young man the way you are going is a mistake wake up wake up wake up now is the time to pray pray now is the time to study you study now is the time to rise in the spirit you will bless the nations out of the residue of the strength of your spirit man Please sit down. I have to find a place to come up. Number four. The fourth cardinal decision that every man must make as a choice towards a great destiny. Are you ready? Is the decision to be healthy and physically vibrant. Don't assume you understand what I just said. You just write and listen to me. The decision to be healthy and physically vibrant. Mm. Third John 1 and verse 2. I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health. Prosper and be in health. Can I tell you the truth? Most people do not know that health is wealth. Your physical well-being is a gift that you have a responsibility of maintaining. Now, let me teach you something as to why we need to be physically vibrant. Any spirit, the Bible tells us that this world, the earth has been given to the sons of men. There's no time, but do you know what it means to be a man? Because not all of God's creation are men. There is an exact species of his creation that he calls men. The condition to be a man is that number one, you must be a spirit. If you are not a spirit, you cannot be a man. So you first must be a spirit. And that spirit must be hosted in a body. If you are a spirit and it's not hosted in a body, you are not a man. Jesus was never a man until he carried a body. And God so designed it, listen carefully, such that there is a health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body. There is a level of agility and health and strength. If your body deteriorates beyond a certain threshold, whether it is your time or not, it's a law. Your spirit will have to depart from your body. So everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime. Science has not mastered the art of transferring spirits into bodies. Everybody has the gift of one body per lifetime. 
Are we together now? So if you mismanage your body, it is not only sin against God, but it's sin against you and against those you have been called to serve. Taking care of your body is beyond being healthy. It's proof of responsibility. It's proof that you love God and that you love the world. We are standing here by the privilege of God's grace, not just because we are anointed, but because our spirit is still being hosted in a healthy body. I would learn a very, very serious lesson. You see, I, I'm not one person who had always been careless with my health. I've always been a vibrant, active person. But every end of the year, I take my time during my retreat. I take my time to do an inventory of my life. And I discovered, sir, that for three years in a row, the worst performing area of my life, even as an anointed man of God, was my health and my physical well-being. And because of things like the healing anointing, because of things like the miraculous, most believers are careless with their bodies. Do you know medical science tells us that most of the sicknesses and diseases that destroy people in their 50s and 60s, the symptoms often start from their mid-20s, but it's because we have been trained to be careless over our bodies. What is there about the pain? doesn't matter. Ah, you're overworking yourself. It doesn't matter. And we say things, I don't know how they say it here, but in Nigeria they say disease, no, they kill African man. The meaning of that is that it doesn't matter an African man. You keep saying that until you die. Are we together? It says, a body has thou prepared for me. It's important. It's important. As ministers of the gospel, we stretch ourselves. Sometimes, my dear friends and people say, Apostle, rest. My life will be really delivered when a father of faith, I went to preach for him. And when I was done, he called me into his office. And he said, Apostle, be careful. Um, he said, Africans kill their prophets. I know what he meant to say. He wasn't just insulting Africa. But he was saying, people will overwork you. Overwork you in the name of Jesus stretch you in the name of Jesus you finish a vigil you run for another conference you have to choose between eating or sleeping because of how tired you are a time came in my life I did not spend up to two weeks in a whole year at home hello as, it, as important as it is to stretch yourself for the gospel realize that you have to be alive to serve God. Hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you now. Do not see medicine as anti-faith. Did you hear what I said? I believe in the healing power of God, but be responsible. If you are sick and you lay your hands and you pray and nothing works, go to the hospital, you are in the school of the spirit. Don't be ashamed. Go to the hospital as a responsible Christian. Look for a doctor and say, listen, I've been having pains here. What could be the problem? We need to be careful so that many people don't lose out on their lives because of carelessness. Eat well and sleep. Make sure you wake up but sleep. Are we together? Yes. I don't expect you to sleep all day except if you are giving yourself the gift of rest after diligence that can be proven. If you sleep for eight hours every day, by the time you are 30, you've slept for one third of your life. You've slept for 10 years. Yes, sir. At age 30, sleeping at eight hours every day, you've slept successfully for 10 years. Hallelujah. But make up your mind to stay healthy. I made up my mind as a personal revelation backed up by grace that I'll be healthy. I'm here for a long time. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you ask the devil. In the name of, you are also here for a long time. But take responsibility. Don't just start 40 days fasting without training. 
believers, we need to be careful. You, you have ulcer and get into all kinds of... There is a skill to doing this thing. Are we together now? Don't wake up one day and say, I will not eat until... Mm -mm, take it easy. I know you want power, but take it easy. I'm not teaching you to be lazy, but you need to take it easy, my dear ones. Take it easy. People have a lot of zeal and they incur all kinds of injuries to their bodies and their lives because they are careless. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe in the healing power of Jesus, but we have a team of very professional doctors. Very professional doctors. Hallelujah. Yes. I have people that come and do a medical checkup on me as a man of God. Are we together? Yes, they do. Absolutely. Medical checkup. Are you? If you are healed, it should show. Why are you afraid? <laughs> Number five. Number five. Some of you, even when God lifts you, you still eat as if you are not lifted. It is, it is, it is bad. Listen, eat well. Fast, but eat well. Some of you, the way you were eating as a student is the same way you are still eating as a director. No. Be fair on yourself, or at least be fair on your children. Hallelujah. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but I will never allow religion to blackmail me into making a mess of my diet and my health simply using the guys. It is not humility. I will eat well, a beautiful, decent meal, drink good water, and serve Jesus. Number five, number five, number five, number five. What is the fifth decision? Is someone learning? The fifth decision that you must make with your life if you want to actualize destiny is the decision to be financially empowered. Right. Hmm. The decision to be financially empowered. One very scary scripture in um, the Bible, Proverbs 22, 7. If you love Jesus, read it. Proverbs 22, 7. Ready? South Africa, one, two, read. One more time. So let me become a lecturer for a few seconds. Based on these intelligent people, what is another way to be a slave? What is another way to be a slave? So if I want to make you a slave, I don't make you a slave by making you a slave. I make you a slave by making you a borrower. that the rich will always as a rule rule over the poor the rich anyone will rule over the poor anyone are we together the decision to be financially empowered is beyond just wanting money is beyond just materialism and running away from poverty can i tell you the truth you will never be able to serve god productively when you are economically disempowered. Make sure you believe me and don't have to use your life to learn this lesson. There are many sincere people who love the Lord, but for some reason, religion has brought us to a point where we've been comfortable with poverty, lack. Some of you today, there are sad stories in your life that can be directly connected to poverty. I'm sure many of you may have followed my teachings when I said it was not Delilah that killed Samson. It was money. No, it was not Delilah that killed Samson. Delilah did not kill Samson. Money killed Samson. Because if the men came to Delilah and said, Delilah, we want to kill Samson, she would slap them and walk away. But when she called them, they called her and said, listen, we will give you money. Said, what did you say? Money. It took resources to make this conference happen. It took resources to transport some of you. Some of you, your parents went through every kind of pain for you to be where you are. Resources will help you tell them thank you. 
Are we together now? You can't help the poor by becoming one of them. You must obtain grace. I made up my mind first for myself and then as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. I will raise a people of influence, wealth, and power. It is not prosperity or having materials that destroy people. No, it is that they have not understood the purpose connected to wealth and they have not exalted Jesus above it all. A man can be poor and still be materialistic. It's just that he does not have the materials to demonstrate that state yet. Hallelujah. Say, I will not be poor. Let the devil hear it. When we say this thing in church, most times it's just a marketing of lust and flesh. But I'm telling you, the agenda is bigger than that. Make up your mind. My children will not beg because of my irresponsibility. No, sir. No, sir. My children will not be sent from school and they come and say, Baba, Mama, help me. There's no school fees. There's nothing I can do about it. Then they go into prostitution. Then they go into armed robbery. Or that if the church remains poor, we will lose our precious people. Because in the presence of desperation, any option is worth bringing to the table. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of desperation, any option, including selling your body, selling your destiny, some of you, sadly, you made that mistake because you were searching for school fees. It's not enough to say, may God bless you. Make up your mind. I made up my mind intentionally. I remember when I waved poverty goodbye and it waved me back. Yes, sir. Don't just wave it and go. Insist that it waves you back. Hallelujah. You know what it means to feed the nations? To bless people? To feed the hungry? To give people an opportunity who they never... See, there is only so much you can do with money for yourself. How many are you? This is all of you standing. How many cars can you drive? How many houses can you live in? How many plates of food can you eat? We're talking about resources that, with, you see, with wealth you buy efficiency. With wealth you can redeem time. Are we together now? With wealth you can become a blessing to the world. In thee shall all the families of the earth, even in South Africa, be blessed. Imagine that you set up a foundation today that can feed, clothe, and send just 100 children to school. Take them off the streets, and you are doing that in the name of Jesus. Now, let me challenge you, then I move to the last point. You are not truly wealthy until you can give to the kingdom without it affecting you. Hear what I said. Don't tell me you have a house. You are just comfortable. Until you can give to the kingdom and be able to sleep without thinking and say, was it God? You are not wealthy yet. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Listen, make up your mind. I am grateful to God today that among the many cardinal decisions I made with my life, I probably would have been a man of God manipulating people today out of financial pressure. There are many people who found God but ignored his ways. And today they are paying the price. That's the reason why I don't condemn people. I lovingly call people to order because I don't know what I would have done if I were in their state. By the time your wife comes to tell you this call, is it that God cost us by calling us into ministry? You wouldn't know when you get up and you are, you, they think you are praying in the living room, but you are just walking around and say, God, 
I would have been a medical doctor by now. I would have been in America by now. I answered the call. Is it that you called me to waste my life? The day your son looks at you and says, Daddy, I love you, but I never want to be like you. You will think it will not affect you until you find out that you literally become sick because your life is no longer an inspiration. Shout God forbid. Reject poverty, oh. My dear people, hear me. Reject it consciously and willingly. And can I tell you, there is a spirit in Africa that thinks something is wrong when you become empowered early. I've seen this as I travel across the nations. A young boy of 22 years established with the dignity of kingdom integrity, not by fraud and plain pranks. You find that and people say, you are, how old are you, 22? Having a house, a foundation, taking care of parents, funding God's work. How did that happen? Go and read the Bible about somebody called a rich, young ruler. One more time. A rich, young ruler. Now, I like that description. Rich, then have an advantage of time. Young, then a ruler. I've done a teaching on that. Rich, young ruler. Three of them can go hand in hand. You can be rich, you can be young, you can have dominion. The one thing he did not have, he wisely came to Jesus. Good master, I have every other thing except you. Be established early in life. Now let me give you the last and then we'll pray. Has your stay been worth the while? Number six. What is the sixth foundational decision that everybody must make as a choice towards actualizing destiny? If you didn't hear anything I said, hear this one. You must make a decision to build quality destiny relationships. Make a decision from now that I will build quality destiny relationships. Quality destiny relationships. The first command that God gave man is found in Genesis chapter 1 when you read 26 to 28. It says, be fruitful. If you understand anything about fruitfulness from biology, fruitfulness is always a product of relationship are we together you cannot be fruitful in isolation be fruitful meant be relational everything multiplies on the basis of relationships look at me please many of you here are science-based students you study physics a line is simply two points that have agreed to relate Am I right on that? And the very foundation of architecture is based on this philosophy. When you put one dot, you cannot call it a line. When you put another dot anywhere across a paper, if two of them agree to relate, you call it a line. If many lines agree to relate, they build structures. That includes the human body. Are we together? At a unicellular level, when you fragment the human body, fragment the cells, you find lines. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. A man who refuses to relate, even with Jesus, can go to hell. Relationships are that powerful. You will go to heaven or hell based on relationships. It is that powerful. Not a gift relationships everybody in hell today was not in hell or is not in hell because they are sinners it is not they are being sinners that took them to hell is they are rejecting that relationship of the gift of Jesus that took them to hell hear me in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters Don't say it doesn't matter. I don't care who likes me. I don't care who. Ah, be careful, be careful, be careful. Don't allow your ignorance punish you. 
There are people in destiny called gatekeepers. You can't cast them away. You can only pray for favor. Did you hear what I said? Including unbelievers. There are certain unbelievers that are not castable. No. You have to pray that God will grant them favor. Favor with them. Otherwise, some gates will be closed. Listen. Joseph interpreted the dreams of three people. Two interpretations still left him in prison. But one relationship that he interpreted the dream took him out of the prison. He interpreted the dream of the baker. That relationship had no power to lift him. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. It had no power to lift him. But when the king dreamt, as soon as he interpreted the king's dream, he came out of that dungeon immediately. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here in South Africa now because of relationship. There are people who have gotten jobs not just based on their educational qualification, but relationships. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are people today who have their children on scholarship, not necessarily based on merit, but because the owner of the scholarship board said, I remember something your father did for me in 1975 here is my time to bless you that is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake hallelujah that is the reason why when you come to church it's good to respect people not just men of God respect everybody you don't know who you are sitting by their left and their right it may be your destiny helper Turn to someone and say, God bless you. Mean what you are saying. You may be reprogramming your next 10 years. Your next 15 years. Listen. Look at me, my precious people. Hear me. People do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. There are many members today who have come to church not just because of the theological accuracy of the man of God, but something about the heart of a shepherd, something about the heart of a father. Sometimes it's not always about Greek and Hebrew and all this display of the anointing, that sense of empathy, thoughtfulness. When you study leadership professionally, you ascend the ladder of influence among many factors by learning relationships. There are people today who have had dreams that God gave them, but those dreams will never come to pass because they did not know that men are midwives. Did you hear what I said? Men are midwives. They midwife destinies. When God says yes, you need a man to also say yes for yes to be made manifest in your life. Here's how the Bible puts it. The spirit and the bride say come. The spirit can say come, but the bride must also say come. For many of you, God has said yes to many prayers, but the men that must stand in partnership with God to say yes, you have not learned relationships and it has recycled pain in your life. That includes men of God. Can I tell you the truth? Hear me. Some of you would have gotten visas easily. One day at a consular, a head of the consulate passed you and you looked at them with disdain, not knowing one day you would need a visa. And now you come to them and they remember you. Can I tell you, when men decide to deal with you in this world, only God can help you. Yes, sir. Are we together? You get into a restaurant and you shout at everybody because you have some money. And you do not know you are shouting at the owner of the restaurant. Usually you know poor people by their arrogance in these kinds of places. People who are blessed are cautious because they, it, it, it was by labor they built. They respect everybody. Can I tell you the truth? 
I want to teach you four words very quickly. Use them and change your relational life. I don't have all the time I have to wrap up. Number one, I am sorry. You just write it. Do what I'm asking you to do. I am sorry. Say it. One more time. Let it sting your ego. Say it. I am sorry has healed and mended many relationships. Divorce rates are growing simply because the couple do not have the humility to just say, I am. Don't say sorry. Who is sorry? Listen, when you say I am sorry, what you are saying is that I admit that I am human and that the whole world is a classroom and we all are students. You attract the empathy and the sympathy of men when you can admit that I am sorry. One more time, say it. I am sorry. Number two, thank you. Don't say thanks. Write it down. Thank you. Say thank you. I'm teaching you how to live a superior life. Say thank you. Thank you. One more time. Listen, if I'm kind to you 10 times, say thank you 10 times. Go back and tell your lecturer thank you. Go back and tell him I'm sorry. And you watch what happens to you. Are you ready for the third? Please write it down. Please, please is a revelation of courtesy. It means you have respect and regard for people as touching their difference. Please, don't say shift. No. Don't say call me, call me, call me. You, are, you want a job and you're asking the person, call me. And he says, that's it. Lord, thank you for answering my prayer. You've shown me that this person will be an enemy to this company. Do you know, please is a call for exemption. Every time you say please, you mean is there a chance of bringing an exemption? Please. Say it. Please. One more time. Please. Let's do the three rehearsals before I give you the last. Number one. Please. Come on, South Africa. Number one. Please. Number two. Please. Number three. Please. Ready for the fourth? God bless you. Write it down. We're wrapping up. Write it down. You must return to your campus, changed people. This is the kind of thing to hashtag, not those Luciferian, Babylonian things. You know what I'm talking about. God bless you. Say it. Do you know what it means to bless? To bless means to be put in a position of advantage. To be empowered so that you make advancement. So when you tell men God bless you, you become a prophet over their destiny. You go to Israel, they greet you and they say shalom. And they will tell you God bless you. God bless you. Say it. You go back to your hostel, go back to your place of work, and tell someone God bless you they will look at you and say in this world where are you coming from then you tell them house of treasures youth conference that something there a, a re-engineering happened in my spirit man and I tell you use these four expressions and use them as keys they will open ancient doors why did you come late I'm sorry I'm sorry does not always mean you are wrong. It means you are wise. I am sorry does not always mean you are wrong. You don't have to be wrong to say I'm sorry. You are the voice of reasoning among the two. So you say I'm sorry. Hmm. Number two. Thank you. Don't call someone to give you money for one week, ringing him every day, blackmailing him with scriptures. Are we together now? The Bible says, be good to all men, send. The Bible says, when it is, we send. And then the person now sends you 1,000 rand, and after five hours, you send one word, thanks. You have closed a door and sealed it with a padlock. 
Are we together? There are many people, the moment you receive their SMS, you know they're about to beg. So one year later, now that the rent is about expiring, here they say, Calvary greetings. Just to let you know I'm still here. Who do you think you are? Hallelujah, I have to tie this up. The decision to build. There are three kinds of relationships in your life. Let me wrap up with this. We can spend the whole night here. There are three kinds of relationships you must build. Number one, they are called general relationships. Be good to all men. The Bible says, honor all men. Then it says, honor the king. Honor all men. The uneducated person pushing some truck outside, honor them. The person who cleans your house, honor them. Learn as a principle to respect and honor people regardless their pedigree, whether you feel they deserve it or not. If you honor only successful people, you'll be a hypocrite. Honor all men. You get up in the morning, tell them good morning. Don't, don't join this, this, this bedeviled thing that is eroding respect from our generation. You get up and there are elderly people around and you just pass and don't care. No. Are we together? general relationships. Number two, there are seasonal relationships. Now, these relationships are not there forever. The key to maximizing these relationships is to discern what they were supposed to deliver unto you and to receive it on time before the validity period expires. And you must have the discernment to know when the seasons end. Some seasonal relationships can last as short as one week. And yet if you do not receive what was supposed to come from them, you would have missed a kairos moment in your life. Seasonal relationships. How do you know that a relationship has come to an end? It will stop blessing you no matter how good the individuals are. Because a relationship blessing you is a product of a grace that comes in between you. Once the pouring stops, you will know. Number three, destiny relationships. These are the kinds of relationships that you must swallow your pride and protect by all means. Because these relationships are not just contributors to your life. They are in many regards the basis for your advancement in life. Listen, only a foolish person will give all men access to your holy of holies. The building of the tabernacle is a representation of access points that should happen as men qualify. Never give people access beyond their last level of honor. Never give people access beyond their last level of honor. If they do not discern you as touching what you represent, let them stop there at the outer court. Don't meet somebody for the first time and he's in your bedroom. You are telling him the secret, very deep things about your husband, your wife, your life, only to find out that you were educating a betrayer. Listen, when Satan wants to destroy men, don't tempt me, I need to wrap up. When Satan wants to destroy men, watch this. He, he makes do with three groups of people. If you find these three groups of people in your life, don't avoid them. But be careful. Number one, a wicked person. A wicked person is Satan's most profitable tool. If Satan does not find a wicked person, the next person he makes do with is a selfish person. And then if he cannot find a selfish person, he will finally make do with an ignorant person. These three groups of people, leaders, you must learn to be careful. A wicked person, a selfish person, 
and an ignorant person. The difference, all three can bring the same harm to your life. A wicked person does it in a premeditated way. He is happy before and after the wickedness because it was intentional. A selfish person is so concerned about himself, he's not aware of many other people he's hurting while pursuing his or her program. A foolish person is so bankrupt of knowledge, they will regret at the end of what they have done, but they will still do it. May you not be any of these three. I have to end. Can I speak over your life? And then I wrap up my session. Please rise up and for the next two minutes, pray every one of these six points. Please, just one minute. Everyone pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. My destiny is changing indeed. You have brought your word. You have brought wisdom to my life. Hallelujah. Is someone praying? Oh, I will not fail in life and destiny by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spare me two more minutes. I want to make one altar call before I make the prophetic declaration. I cannot assume it will be an expensive assumption that of the many wonderful people gathered here, that everyone has his way right with Jesus. Every time he gathers a people like this, he's added even to the congregation as many who would be saved. You heard me speak. And whilst you heard me speak, the Spirit of God began to minister to you. That this thing apostle is saying you need to make it right I taught you that decisions decide destiny you can choose to reject Jesus as an act of your will are we together now but I want to make a noble call I want to call one youth who would not be ashamed and afraid and say an apostle if I were ever taught this way I would have handed my life over to Jesus I never knew he, I knew he was this important. But now that you know, it is within your power to decide. I count one to five. I want you to leave your seat and run with the determination of a hungry person. Come and stand in front right here. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Run like you mean business with your destiny. And come and stand here. Go ahead. Celebrate them as they come. Come to Jesus. Come. 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 Jesus is calling you. I could earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself. I believe that God by this meeting is tearing up something among the youth in South Africa. We are restoring Jesus to the schools. Restoring Jesus to the streets. Making it fashionable to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You are making this decision on behalf of your children born and unborn. It's not just for yourself. They will thank you for the honor of making this decision. You are winning a destiny war once and for all. And I salute and congratulate you for coming, making this noble, this bold decision. Now I request that you lift your right hand, please. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are before the Lord Jesus. Apostle, you do not know how I've lived my life. I'm not even sure the Lord will accept me. Join them. Join them. He's always willing to help you. Help you Hallelujah. get free from addictions. Help yes, you get free from all kinds of satanic yes, things. Sir. Don't go back with these things. Yes, sir. No! Yes, sir. Can give you a Glory. new beginning. 
Those in front, I'd like you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is unto Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. Now, I decide as an act of my will to receive you into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb keep your hands lifted my precious father thank you for what you are doing in South Africa thank you for the restoration that is happening even among the youth these precious ones have come declaring your Lordship over their lives and I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is this moment broken off from your life. In the name of Jesus, this moment broken off from your life. I empower you by the spirit of the living God to live a victorious life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare that you go forward ever and backward never. Never to return to the way of sin never to return to your old ways in the name of jesus christ hallelujah give jesus a wonderful hand clap hallelujah now one moment listen we want to take down your names and your phone numbers many of you are young people in different campuses we want to make sure that you will you will, will, will help you to maintain this decision. So I want you to go with our sister right there. It's just for two minutes. Pastors, if you can help them so we get all these names quickly and they return back to the service. Please, can you just go with them just for two minutes? Go with them. Please, nobody leaving the auditorium. Let these precious people go so we can get their details. Please. No keep clapping, keep clapping as they go. Mountain you won't climb up Jumping up to me No oh, you won't keep up I won't keep up Coming up to me Hallelujah Now while they are going I just want to They will hear as I, I want to speak over your life Prophetic declarations are very powerful They program a climate of possibility over your life Ezekiel said, I, I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a sound. I want to declare over your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to the two lift gates of your destiny. Right now, let it be opened now. Shout a louder amen. Let it be opened now. Listen. Let the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost that empowers men and women to live victorious lives. I stretch my hands towards you. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. You return to your various stations as signs and wonders. I pray for you, campus fellowship presidents, men and women in training, may you stay with the holy ghost until you become mighty battle axes that can be used for the kingdom in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you for all those who have been wounded by your past by mistakes you have made those who have been ill mentored poorly mentored some of you who came from maternal paternal backgrounds that were not the best and you are carrying seeds of hurt and pain in the name of Jesus let the balm in Gilead bring you healing now let the balm in Gilead bring you healing now let the great physician bring you healing now finally 
for those of you who are students I want to pray for you whether undergraduate postgraduates I want to bless your mind speaking about Daniel he said when he was tested in the matters of wisdom he was found to be ten times better I stretch my hands Eli who said there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty maketh men of understanding in the name of Jesus receive extraordinary intelligence extraordinary intelligence extraordinary intelligence extraordinary intelligence extraordinary intelligence for those of you here who are final year students I pray for you as you graduate may jobs be waiting for you as you graduate may creative ideas that will turn you into entrepreneurs be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ South African youth I love you may the Lord bless you go from glory to glory in Jesus name